Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dragon Age Resurgent. This is episode 6. Uh, today, Rachel is back. That's the good news. The bad news I'm is back. Sam... Yes, the bad news is Sam unfortunately will not be able to join us today for this session. I'm hoping that by next session we'll have everybody else back together and it'll be all good and dandy. So um, we're just going to push forward and uh, move to our... Uh, warm up questions. So today's warm up this, question um, is at this ahead. point all at this point all the Kenner lovers have just kind of tuned out like no No Kenna I know. <laughs> My question is um hypothetical. Let's say that the fifth blight never occurred. How would your character's life be different right now? What would have happened instead with your character if your if the fifth blight never happened? Uh, if the fifth blight never happened, would the Ferelden Circle have fallen? No, hypothetically. it would not. It hypothetically would not have. Okay. Um, well, in that case, um, Andrea would be living a life pretty much the same, but she would be a lot less wary of magic and possibly more likely to be morally fluid. But other than that, mm. her life would have been pretty similar. She still would have been a slave for the last 12 years. She still would have been fighting in the arena. Um, but yeah, she, that it would just be an internal way that she looks at magic that would be different but other mm -hmm. than that she'd be pretty similar i don't okay. think it would have affected her history much okay sure i expect that like halicere's life is pretty much going to be unaffected by it if anything I think her relationship with the Dwarven people would probably be much more uh, intricate and, and, and mm -hmm. she would have a much deeper understanding of the Dwarves because you don't get forged in fire unless you go to the fire. Um, so among her travels, she probably would have trained and deliberately sought out training from the Dwarves since, you know, it, when the fifth blight happened, she just had to step outside to get some heavy duty training. Um, mm -hmm. But without that, I think she would have sought out training in Orzammar. Oh, that's right. awesome. I didn't know that. Surprise. That's really cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, because the, the Bronca thing would never have happened. So that 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 sounds really cool that that's how it would have gone. Well, Theo would be raising a daughter. Oh. Oh, <laughs> that's true. Ew. Oh, <laughs> ooh, too soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna cry over here now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he would have done his time doing. I think he'd have even. Um, I think he might have even stopped selling poisons uh, mm. because he wouldn't. Because I mean, you've, if you've got a kid running around, you don't want them accidentally sipping on a bottle of crow poison. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So, Only Daddy yeah. can do that part time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, he'd be massively different. He'd he'd be a family person, and he'd be raising his daughter, and he would have completely changed Chris. He'd have still been a merchant, but he'd have stuck to like herbalism, like health potions, and and safe. And he'd have been a lot more safer as a person. He wouldn't have taken risks. Okay. Um, I don't think the blight had that much of an effect on Navara, did it? Like, yeah, Cedric is probably going to be the most probably going to be the most challenging if, if anything was to change in his life. Um, I think that you know Navara, uh, when the fifth blight happened, I mean, the all of Thetis, you know, would have known about it, and it probably yeah. would have affected them very indirectly, just like if a major tragedy happened in another part of the world in real life uh so i don't know if i don't know if cedric feels like that anything would have changed yeah i don't maybe yeah like you said maybe very minor things changed but nothing like i'm pretty sure he would have had like the same life you still would have been a templar or training to be a templar everything would have just gone normally she would have been so happy uh, her hold and a lot of her people would have been fine, 
there okay. would have been no devastation. Um, I think at this point in her life, if the blight had never happened, she probably would have been working towards becoming a good leader. Um, mm-hmm. I imagine in her whole, the thane isn't inherited, it's, it's earned. So she would be trying to earn the respect of her people, um, becoming a better hunter, um, a better sister. She's probably super protective over them, even still. <laughs> and, uh, watching them closely. Too young to have crushes. <laughs> I love, I love that. <laughs> yeah, she would have been uh, watching them closely as they grow, um, and I think she just would have been enjoying her life with her family. Um, and she would have been really happy. I want to start with Halasair because okay. she's been hanging out, keeping watch. You've, that's where you've been this whole time. You got to the yeah. mines. You decided to just keep watch, just make sure that, you know, nothing funny is happening on the outside. Sure. And one thing that I want to point out, Halasair, is that it kind of, you kind of maybe have some consciously noticed this over the last few days but -hmm. it's become a lot more noticeable and and apparent to the point that you realize that's kind of odd um you realize that slowly but surely your armor has started to feel looser around you Hmm. slowly but surely so while she's alone anyway she's Probably testing that out a little bit more. Just yeah. let's see how still, loose this is. It still fits. I mean, it's still going to protect you just fine. It just doesn't... It's not as snug as it used to be for some reason. Sure. I guess you can make a cunning... Let's make a cunning roll and tell me what the value is. Okay. We have a 14 with a stunt. You try to put your finger on why your armor is looser, and mm-hmm. you rule out the obvious. It's not the armor itself. The armor sure. itself is not changing. Of course, that could be a possibility. You'd know with magic and all involved. But oddly enough, your bust size has decreased slightly. Hmm. Your bust size has decreased. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's fine. What? No. That's okay. It just means she's she's getting you know better. You've seen acrobats, right? Yeah. Gymnasts. Gymnasts, yeah. So that that's interesting. Whether or not you actually consider that that big of a deal is up to you. It's just something I would point out. Well, it it's concerning to her just because you know mm-hmm. my it, something's going on with my body. Um. But, I mean, the the entire overlying social issue, that yeah, she doesn't care about that. Yeah. It's less to get in the way when she's fighting, and it makes breastplates a lot easier. True. <laughs> but in the meantime, it, it's a concerning symptom of something. I'm sure it is. <laughs> eh. Uh, okay. Maybe she should talk to Violetta. <laughs> it is getting to be... Uh, it's getting to be later in the afternoon... And the rest of the Pentafeve Guardians, plus Hugh and Violetta, uh, you hear them emerging from the cave. Uh, she will, assuming there's still nobody about to, to come barreling towards them, she will go to meet them as she hears them. I was going to say, I'm going to be marching right okay. to Hallie. <laughs> like, stink face. <laughs> <laughs> Violetta will speak up when she first when she sees you and say, Hello, sir, dear. I see that uh, you're still in one piece. I'm still in one piece. Are you what? As Andrea passes by. <laughs> Are you well? I'm, I'm fine. Just, just a little surprised at what, what was down there, but... What was down there? Magic dwarves. He'll just say nonchalantly. <laughs> yeah, like again, you please. Magic tools. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? What did Hallie say? As, uh, again, please. Uh, like repeat yourself, please. Ma- magic dwarves. Mm. A, a school of them. She looks a little lost. 
Yeah, that's how yeah. I felt to you, Hallie. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, my ex fiance is teaching a school for them. Teaching a school for magic dwarves. Apparently. And she, like, kind of looks past to see if anyone's being brought up. <laughs> Um, would Hallie, I mean, would she have felt that earthquake? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Our... That was a powerful quake. Is everyone all right? That Does anyone wasn't... need help? Um, Theo's just going to very quickly say, that wasn't them. That, that was ah. me. That was <laughs> the other magic dwarf. <laughs> she, she's trying not to, to directly look at Violetta, but she's like, oh, well, Violetta knows that now. Violetta kind of glances towards Theo when he says that. Mm. Yeah, that I see. was an accident, but it was caused by myself. I see. Um, I, I believe like there's... Mm. it was perhaps a stronger version of the ground the parking other. when we spoke before. It seems that there are many questions. Yes. Most of all, magic dwarves. Yeah. Yeah. They're not connected I, I would... to the Fade, so... No. There seems to be an outside influence. Uh, yeah, they're cutting into the children's brain and shoving something inside. Apparently it makes them magic. What? Yeah, it, it's a surgery in which they cut into the children's brain and shove something inside with lyrium. And now they can do magic. Well, I suppose if you put it that way, Violetta says. It's Indeed. What the, it's what it was. Just a technical, non-sympathetic you know, sympathetic term for exactly what they're doing. They're shoving stuff inside the children's heads. Doesn't mean we should be absent of sympathy. Just saying. Um, maybe we should talk about this elsewhere. You know. Well, that uh, depends. Do we need to do open. something about this? I, I don't think. If every dwarf is in danger, if we don't find the anvil, I think. At the moment, an army full of golems is a worse threat. Right. Um, she very clearly disapproves. All right, here's the thing. I'm um, obviously not in my right mind right now. I am very agitated and angry, and that is not... Um, well, uh, emotional mages are not really the best safest companions, so I'm going to go get my head right. Um, I'd like to go back to the Alluvion alone, with maybe Razakel so she can show me the way. And I'll see you guys after I do some meditating, because I am infuriated at the pre at present. So if that would be alright with all of you, I'm going to go, toodaloo, type thing. Alright. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with you, but... <laughs> Um, I, I understand that you want to meditate alone, and I'll, I will respect that wish, but... Yeah, you're I was fine going to so offer a shield not. as well. I, I would rather not too many people be around me. Um, no. <clears throat> one, one protector will suffice. Very good. Um, Razakiel can I, come. I, I, I just... I go. just feel I just thought that Raza Kale would be able to show us back to the mirror because I can't find it on my own. <laughs> but yes, yeah, yeah, sure, you can come. And oh, but I need to go now, and I'm gonna start walking. Um, Cedric. Yeah, Theo, fill her in. I've got to go take care of the. Good. The emotional mage. <laughs> Her name's Andrea. I've got to go take care of the emotional mage named Andrea. Pretty, <laughs> Razakel says. Pretty, she says as she goes, follows, uh, follows Andrea. I'm going to um, link my arm with Razakel. <laughs> like, Razakel, can you show me how how to get back to the mirror, please? She says, mirror, back, yes, 
I can find back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're so great. <laughs> <laughs> Cedric will catch up to them and follow them. Broody coming too. Rosekale <laughs> asks. Broody. <laughs> Yes, Broody coming too. How about Arrow? Razakale asks. No, he should stay away. <laughs> ah. Okay, Razakale okay. says. And the three of them will go off. This group just became very awkward, she, said, uh, she thinks. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Halisa, I don't know mm. why we're even a group. We've tried to make this work, but clearly there are too many strong opinions. Why are you a group? Violetta asks. I don't know. Choice. <sighs> if this is what I get for trying to help my people, I might as well be with my people. No, I don't think so. I, I think I need to understand more about what's going on. Well, uh, why don't we return to the camp and then perhaps we can take a walk? Sure. And then she'll turn her attention to, uh, you know, Violetta. And I'm, I'm thinking Hugh is still behind. Hugh with is still them, there, right? too. Yeah, Hugh All is right. right there as well. And uh, I'm I'm assuming Kenna is lingering in the background. <laughs> yeah, Kendra Kenna's lingering in the background. So why don't we all return to camp, settle down, and and I'll help any wounds that need to be wrapped and bound, and, and then I can learn more. So I'll start with I'll start with the Halasair Theoben group. So sure, sure. you guys are trying to uh, make your way. I mean, uh, Violetta knows the way back sure. um, towards the towards the wagons again. While you guys are uh, making your way uh, to the camp, to the gypsy camp, you pass by this, this stream of some sort, and there happens to be right by the stream, it's laden with these beautiful blue-looking flowers. Um, and on the opposite side of the stream, um, there is like a little shrubbery full of various other plants and Princess Violetta stops and says, do you mind if I, if we stop over here just for a moment while I procure a few things from across the stream? She says, pointing to the, to the bush that I was talking about with several plants. That's fine. Yeah. Do you wish for anyone to come with you? Hugh asks. She says, I don't think that would be necessary, but if you wish to come with, I'm not going to stop you, handsome. Uh, Violetta says to Hugh. <laughs> Hugh kind of like turns around, looking, looking <laughs> around. <laughs> and then without, without uh, thinking about it too much further, he follows Violetta towards the bush. Mm -hmm. Dia would have filled Pally in on everything that the groups learned. Um, sure, sure. But he wouldn't have said anything, you know, personal or made any idle chit chat. Right. Um, so she is probably digesting all of that information. I'm not going to ask if you're all right. Good. Because that would be foolish. I know you're not. I know nobody here is. just it's strange and it is not an easy situation but I think you did the right thing well that makes one of you I don't know I don't know the others thoughts but I do. one can I do. Do you? Cedric is very wary of the situation, and Andrea hates me. Because I outed her as a slave. And mm. it was a stupid thing, said out of anger. But it happened, 
and I'm going to be surprised if I don't wake up tonight with a fireball through my skull. Well, you won't do that, but... That's true. Electricity is more her thing. <laughs> this is not an easy situation that you have just faced. Emotions are going to be high, and... <sighs> have you ever had an argument before? And yeah, that that is said with a very slight sardonic smile. <laughs> well, I was married, one can assume. And yet you live. And moreover, you my, can... My disagree. wife wasn't a gladiator. She, she wasn't a magical gladiator. True. But my point is that foolish things are done and said in anger. And yet, this is not always going to be an ending. So, that secret was not yours to give. And you know this. I do, but there is absolutely nothing I can do to take that back or make up no. for that. No, but you can agree to continue on, the two of you. Or not, and how, that that is between you. Your question. My question is, how am I supposed to do that when she won't look at me without storming off? You go up and you grab her. No, no, she'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I was not <laughs> serious. <laughs> you will need some time to, to, to cool off. Just Anger will that. fade. I'm not that. You are not just a merchant. None of us are just anything anymore. Give it some time. There will be a chance for words. Things may be mended. And until then, you are not alone in this. Do you understand? I feel the only answer I can give is yes. I would rather take the truth. I was in a room full of dwarves down there and I never felt more alone in my life. I understand this too. I wasn't part of them. I wasn't part of this group. You are a part of this group. We may fray at the edges, but we all have our purpose here. <clears throat> I'm not going to <clears throat> storm off. I'm not going to leave. I'm good. not abandoning this group, and that is all I can promise at the moment. Excellent. I wouldn't have asked anything else. You do know that even if she throws a tantrum and comes at you, I will stand between you two. Thank you. Uh, she she kind of scares me a bit. That's, that's kind of hot. Of course. Pally, can I ask you something in all seriousness? Anything. How do you do this? How do you stay so vigilant that things must be done? And how do you not lose hope? It's difficult. <laughs> really? Because you make it it's look so very easy. Difficult. I do, don't I? Yeah. I have to admit I'm fairly fantastic at that. <laughs> I... I have never had a mother, a father. I've had 
I've had people in my history to stand as that, and I've had non-relations, uh, non non-blood, call me their own. It, it it was an early early lesson that I learned that family and, and all that is not necessarily related to blood. If something like that can happen, how can you not have hope? I I believe we are all tested in our own and we either find our true path through it or we fail. And I would rather find a path through it. And at the end of the day, if I can make somebody else hopeful, if I can if I can use my word and my shield to give somebody that one extra piece of hope, then that's really all I need. At the end of the day, what have you done? That was a very long answer. I should have, should have been... That's only a part of it. You should have heard me chant it in my mind. I feel like I should have been taking notes. <laughs> no. no, you should not. But all right, sometimes you're, you're... the hope is all you have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on saving my people. I'm going to focus on making sure that the anvil is locked away or better yet destroyed. As will I. Have my people enslaved. And That's nor my... will I. And she'll, she'll, you know, extend a hand to, to, to like, you know, grasp his. He'll take it and shake as hard as his dwarfy fingers can. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll ruffle. <laughs> Ruffle his, his hair with the the other hand. <laughs> he looks kind of uh, disappointed by la that, like, oh, I just lost points. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why she did it. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, we'll we'll make this right, you and I. Just focusing on the anvil just says under his breath to himself. And it's a star, she'll take it. <laughs> Kenna, you notice this patch of fungi, and you remember Violetta mentioning something about, about spaghetti fungus? Yeah. Uh, and uh, curiously, you go over to the fungus just because it looks like knowing you you know your way around the forest so you poke at it with your staff it it splits open with a sort of like you know passing gas kind of a sound so it's not really like it she, she warned it wasn't the most attractive of fungi as attractive as fungi can be but you do this do definitely see uh, a stringy spaghetti like uh spaghetti like uh material with inside of the mushroom itself. Mm. Would I know what these are used for? Uh, roll me a roll me a cunning um, nature knowledge nature. Seventeen. Nice. Yeah. So this sort of particular part of part uh, fungi, your you believe like just looking at the consistency of it and just you know you might give it a little bit of a smell just to see if it smells like any other mushrooms that you're familiar with. Um, and you believe that it has a resemblance to mushrooms that normally is used to make um, salves or tonics uh, to cure like skin, skin conditions like rashes or like blemishes. Um, make make your skin more silky or smooth it might even be used to like get rid of wrinkles things like that uh so more cosmetic kind of things so that's your best <laughs> guess harmless you guys see no worries <laughs> 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 okay uh kenna will carefully uh dig up the mushroom by its roots 
Okay. Is, is it just the one, or is there like a bushel? There's a whole patch. There's a whole patch of them. Well, yeah. I'll grab like five. All right. Yeah. I would say then... there would be. I would say there wouldn't be more than like a half a dozen of them anyway. So you can take you can take five or the whole six, the whole half dozen if you want. Oh yeah, I'll just take it all. All right, you'll take the whole half dozen. <laughs> I'm proud of my help. <laughs> and then I'll go and find her. You'll go over to to. Violetta, and right now she is uh, uh, carefully picking some of the flowers nearby. Roll me another nature, knowledge nature check, please, Kenna. This DC is going to be a lot lower. Nine. Is that low enough? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say you'll still know what these things are. Uh, these are Andraste's Grace. Um, and... She, uh, when she turns towards you, uh, she uh, gives you a gives you a friendly smile and say, "My Avarian princess, my lady, have you come to take a gander at the the fine flora around us?" In a wee, I actually find the mushrooms you've been looking for, and <sighs> I'll pull one out and show her. These are it, right? Oh, you are a goddess, she says, as she carefully takes uh, the mushrooms and she gives it a, a little bit of a sniff. Yes, they're still quite fresh. I think these will do rather nicely. You are, you are maker send, my dear, she says as she puts some of them in the pack. Oh, Here, for you. your, for your trouble, she says, and she'll hand you a, a, uh, uh, a small, um, bunch a small bunch of blossoms of the andraste's grace and she hands it to you uh, and if you accept it the sweet scent completely uh starts to um entrance your nostrils uh, andraste's grace has a very very uh, alluring scent it's used uh a lot in perfumes in orlay for example these smell wonderful Mm. She says, and it makes very, very relaxing tea as well, if you are able to brew it properly. don't like tea, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. Are you more of a coffee drinker, dear? She asks. No, water's fine. I don't like anything else, I guess. Ah. Milk's good, I guess. I don't know. Milk? Fair enough, she says. There's nothing wrong with that. So, are you going to be using those for your skin then? I mean, it looks very soft. <laughs> <laughs> she says, well, since you've gotten so much, I might save one of them to create some sort of cream for myself. But I definitely can... Uh, this is an extremely versatile uh, mushroom that I am sure could be used in a number of, a number of potions. Do you have one in mind? She says, I have a few in mind. I probably will have to wait and see if a specific customer has a specific need. Then I might use them for whatever it is that they might, that might help them. Well, I'm sure whatever it is, is going to be very cool. <laughs> I like your magic. I think it's helpful and unique. I, she sort of, her smile kind of breaks away a little bit and... Uh, her eyes have a little bit of sadness to them, and she says, Thank you. I, uh, your opinion seems to not be a very popular one. I will. The Avarians practice different magic than, I guess, what the circles encourage. So I understand coming from something different, and people don't understand it right away. What? <laughs> Shut up, Cedric. Yes, it is quite difficult when you're uh, trying to explore not as widely spread territory. Well, I wish you luck in your studies, and I hope whatever concoction you come up with works to your benefit. And I wouldn't mind some of that, you know, skin cream. <laughs> she says, uh, I, I find it very surprising that you would that you would ever need such a thing, but... I'm sure that I can come up with something uh, if we were to travel, if we were to continue traveling together, she says. I, I hope so. I'll leave you to it, my lady. And I'll bow and leave her. Go join the group, I guess. 
Get going, shippers. <laughs> you know, like, what, are we, what are we gonna call a ship between Kenna and Violetta? Put the ship names below. Vio Kenna, Kioletta. 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 Apostate, apostate. <laughs> I, I kind of like Kiolena. Kiolena yeah. too is kind of cool. Yeah, it has but... a good ring to it. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Put your, yeah, put your shipping names down below and we'll see which ones we think we like the best. Andraste's Grace, one of my favorite blossoms, used very much in perfume. The Orlesians loved using them in perfume, but it also has a lot of medicinal properties as well, especially ones that help calm the nerves, both in its scent and even in tea. Hmm. Sounds like that could be useful. It seemed like several people in our group has a lot of, well tensions running. I was Indeed. thinking perhaps this might help calm some people down. And much appreciated. She hands one over to uh, Theoban. Perhaps you should have a whiff. Um, I, I think I've had my share. Thanks. Well, suit yourself, she says, as she carefully places the flower into her pack. <sighs> Well, she says, seeing how the sun is almost setting, we probably will have to set up camp before we actually reach the caravan. I recommend that we do that soon. Very well. And she'll, she'll look to, to Theo to see if he has any uh, input. Nope, he's going to be fairly silent unless you speak to him, so he's just going to go with it. Sure. Should we be concerned about the others? Hugh asks. I believe that they will be all right. Uh, they have Cedric and Andrea, even if she is upset, is still. If anything, that makes her more dangerous. Hmm. Indeed. <laughs> <It's really dangerous. laughs> I believe they will be fine. Um, I'm sure more than one of them has the ability to set camp if need be and hunt if need be. I'm not worried. They're capable. Violetta will say, Razakil, that one lady. Yes. She's very mysterious, isn't she? We all have our secrets. She kind of smiles. Yes, yes, we do. Very true. How did you meet her? She asks. Chance. She, she was a, a friend that uh, she was a, a friend of one of our group my friend a friend of yours I had no idea you two never seemed to uh, interact very much uh, on the contrary actually she was um, giving me advice earlier uh, you, you saw us chatting before we went into the mine uh, yes that's true that's true she says I didn't really consider her that much of a talkative sort. Uh, you, you just don't have, have to get her. You just have to get her with the right people. Uh, me, Andrea, she talks all the time. Hmm. Perhaps I should try to uh, make it a point to reach out. I have to say that I definitely approve of her, of her uh, fashion sense. <laughs> <laughs> Referring to the Harlequin outfit. Yes. <laughs> Let's switch over to Theoban, Andrea, and Razakel. Cedric, Andrea. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Cedric, Andrea. Cedric, like, Andrea, and Razakel. No. no. Razakel to me, played by Kevin today. <laughs> what did you do to me, mage? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's so much the taller. Best freaky Friday ever. <laughs> now I'm a dark spawn in a Harlequin's outfit. <laughs> As you guys are traveling, Razakel will probably... You, she, you, uh, Andrea is probably still holding onto Razakel's arm, and she kind of turns towards her direction, and Razakel asks in a very concerned tone, Why pretty angry? Arrow put uh, pretty in danger today, and pretty needs to calm down. Oh, Arrow's been bad. Yes. <laughs> she sort of turns around. It's all right, though. Razakiel can fix. 
<laughs> I love you, Ulta <laughs> Kale. <laughs> uh, I... How do you... How do you respond to that? Um, I go, thank, thank you, Raza Kale. How would you fix this? <laughs> Sometimes boys dumb. When boys dumb, <laughs> something wrong with head. Yeah. When something wrong with head, you hit it. Oh. Maybe they become smart. <laughs> you don't need to do that. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes boys are dumb. <laughs> Um, no, it's, it's yes. all right. Something in brain, she says, not work right. Yeah, and she I sort agree. of like, that's the back of, her, back of her head, almost like in a, in a <laughs> psychic motion. Right here in back. Right she there says. in the back? Yes. <laughs> that spot, sweet spot, where can make them smarter. <laughs> not always work, though. Not, not as smart as girls, though, right? <laughs> Uh, she says, ha, 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 impossible. <laughs> oh, you are my favorite. Will we be home? S will we be back soon? She uh, looks up uh, up there and says, hmm, sun setting soon. Too far. Should oh. camp first. Okay. All right. Um, Cedric. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't worry, Razakel see good in dark. Uh, it's all right. I, I, ha I bring my own light and I light up my hands because <laughs> mm. <laughs> they can turn on fire. But um, uh, Cedric, Razakel yes? says we're not gonna make it back on time before dark. We should camp. <sighs> sure. <laughs> just, just, just fantastic. Icing on the perfect day, right? All right. Razakil is actually going to start, unless one of you guys decide to do it on your own, Razakil is actually going to start gathering some dry twigs to make a fire. Um, she Cedric... seems to be very skilled in that. <laughs> Cedric will uh, start putting up his tent. Dre doesn't have any of that stuff. Um, Dre is going to uh, assist with the fire because uh, she she has those fire hands now, so she can just light it with her hands. So. When you yeah, when Razakale's gathering the sticks and you just light it with her hands, Razakale says she puts uh, she says that easy. Y yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> She then will go over to um, a shrub and like start um, pulling on some of the. There's like uh, there's like a bunch of leaves and vines, like a patch of leaves and vines, and she's starting to pull them. And she's starting to gathering up in the, into these separate spots and starts um, turning them into small mounds of some sort. Uh, and then at some point she goes. Oh, she looks around and she goes to a tree that I wouldn't say is a palm tree, but they have very broad leaves. And she starts climbing them. She's very, very, uh, she's very athletic. So she kind of scurries up a tree, grabs some of the broad leaves, comes down, and starts laying them down on top of the uh, on top of the vines and leaves that she was bunching up into a mound before. She's nesting. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> when she's done, she uh, she turns towards uh, you, Andrea, and says, "Poofy," and poofy? she kind of puts it on. She kind of, you know, yes, Poofy. She says that she's taking to taking trying to, you know, call you towards her. I'll go over. Um... She she takes her hand carefully and then she places it on top of the the leaf thing and it, she basically has made a bed. A very comfortable bed. Thank you, Rosa Kale. You share with me. <laughs> Rosa Kale kind of looks to the side and she says, "You want share bed with me? Why not?" <laughs> Just... <laughs> she says. She then looks. That make Broody jealous. <laughs> <laughs> we are friends. We can we can sleep next to each other. It's not. A problem. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, she says, good. I get more leaves. Okay. And she'll start adding more leaves to the pile. The other really cool thing about, about this is that the, uh, the broad leaves are actually scented pretty well. 
So it gives a nice little like eucalyptic, like a eucalyptic scent in the air. Oh. Um, if you lie on it. So, so um, thanks for walking me back, Cedric. Very awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Um, well, I know it's not okay, but I just wanted to make sure nothing bad happened. Yeah, I know what you're worried about. <laughs> 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 uh, no, it's it's all right. I, I'm quite adept at keeping my emotions in check. It's just I'm not. I'm I'm used to being alone. And being forced to be with the person who's aggravating me it wasn't putting me in a good spot. Um, I understand. Um, if you wish to continue to be alone, I will respect that decision, and I can leave you alone, if need be. Right. It's all right. I, I got to walk outside today, so... Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm in an okay spot right now. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't have that much time for that in the arena. Uh, I, before yesterday, I hadn't walked outside in the grass barefoot in over 12 years. So, uh, it was, it was a singular experience. I don't even think I could imagine that. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that. <laughs> All right. Oh, it, it's we deal with what we got, and I, uh, I had aside from the end, I had a relatively good day, so it's 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 fine. Well, I'm I'm glad you had a relatively good day. Uh, <laughs> I hope I hope you uh, are able to make peace. Um. <laughs> The only issue I had with that is it's not just me who is affected, and I have I have a master, and I am expected to do certain things. And if I don't do said certain things, bad things can happen, not just to me, but to others in similar situations. Uh, what what certain things are we talking about? Cedric will look really, like, uncomfortable. <laughs> well, I'm a slave, so, um, uh, anything up to death. Th think of us as, um, see? And, uh, at any moment, for any reason, we could be disposed of. Uh, I'm relatively an expensive piece of property, so I probably won't be, but um, my I have a friend who is also a slave, and she's not worth so much money, so um, that being said, due to her closeness to me, she may be punished for me doing something other than what my master expects me to do. And since I've taken the time to help the dwarves, rather than helping him do what he wants to be done, she could be put in danger. And now that Violetta, who knows my master, and now knows I am a slave, knows of this, uh, it could easily she's here, and uh, my, my friend could be in very real danger. Ah, uh, that is troubling indeed. Um, yes. I'm sorry, I don't really know what to say. I don't really have that much experience talking with someone who has had the same experiences as you have. Um, and I, I won't pry on what's going on with uh, your friend or what your master has you do. Um, but I hope that it'll all work out. Thank you. 
Thank you, Cedric. I hope so too, you know, uh, one, one way or another. Um, you did well today. Um, I know a bunch of people who would think otherwise, but <laughs> no, I'd like to well. think that I'm different than them. No, you did well. You, um, you asked the right questions and you waited for the right answers and you didn't lose your temper. Uh, you kept cool under an impossible question. You did, a, you did very well. Um, the order should have more temper like you. Well, I thank you for that. Um, I understand that not all Templars are like, have the same mindset as me, and I hope, I hope that one day I'm able to change that. If I'm ever even able to become a Templar, it's still a big unknown yes. to me. Why? Well, I understand that you may be wanted by by the Templar, but. We're, we're... I'm not going to push, but well, why would they think that you tried to kill this girl? A fellow, a fellow initiate uh, who actually uh, did the act, or at least attempted to, pinned the blame on me, and he seems, he is a more popular initiate than I. So I'm inclined to think that they just believed him over my my word. Um, but it's still a big unknown because before I could find out what the results were or who they believed, I blacked out and ended up traveling with a bunch of random people. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Uh, yeah. The, it's, that other Templar sounds like Wright Pratt, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you have to deal with crappy people. <laughs> yes. He also. Uh, never mind, I shouldn't speak any ill will of him. Um, so, before you were a slave, I'm assuming. Yeah, I did offer to answer some questions, didn't I? <laughs> you don't have to. I understand that emotions are high right now, and I do not wish to bring emotions. What would you like to know? Um, from which circle did you hail from? Ferelden. Ah, uh, I'm. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's that's bad luck. If, <laughs> if I'm able to say that. Um yes, what happened there was a tragedy and a disgusting Very much so. display of hubris. Yes, uh yes, I I uh left twelve years ago, so I wasn't there for it, but pretty much everyone I I knew was gone. It's another thing that I don't think I could imagine. That's good. <laughs> I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Um, but, you know, it, anything else? <laughs> By you saying you left, you yeah, chose to become a slave? No. <laughs> no. Okay. So, All you right. leaving. This is, this is gonna be a difficult. Just bear with me as I go through the story, because if I if I just you know drop it out, then you know you're gonna you get, you're gonna look at me and go all Templar on me, and I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> um. <laughs> that start wasn't a good start, but... Let me, just bear with me. <laughs> you caught me in a pretty generous mood today. <laughs> that's good. Uh, that's, that's very good. 
Okay, um, I was 16 years old, and uh, I got word that um, uh, I might be made, I was going to be made tranquil. Um, uh, you see, I was the first uh, of my kind in the Ferelden Circle, and uh, they didn't really know how well I would handle um, danger in the Fade and such, and uh, they looked at their only real example, which is, is the collared Cerebos of the Q, and they assumed that I'm far more likely to be possessed that age, so they decided not to take the chance. And, I thought uh, you couldn't tranquilize uh, or perform the rite of tranquility on a harrow, on a mage who has completed their harrowing. I, uh, I never did. I was still just a kid, and I, uh, I ran, and I did. I trust put my faith in the wrong people, and I ended up a slave. I appreciate your honesty, uh, but in return, since you were honest with me, I'm going to be honest with you and say that that story makes me really uncomfortable. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm not sure how I feel. I understand. I I'm going to tell you now that I absolutely hate the right of tranquility. I think it's a disgusting thing to do to someone. And I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It's just the whole running away thing. I understand kind of why you ran away, but it's still... It's, it's like my nature to, to be wary when the mage says they ran away. Well, here's the thing. I was 16 years old, and um, you do stupid stuff when you're a kid. I, uh, I uh, like I said, I, I, I ran away. I was scared. I trusted the wrong people. That's not me anymore. That was me as a teenager. Um. I'm, that's not who I am anymore, but I I understand why that would make you a little wary. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think that's all I can handle for the truth <laughs> like, right now. I don't, I don't think I can ask any more questions. Okay. Um, but I, I, I do thank you for answering them. Well, you're welcome. Um. <laughs> Maybe we both should do some meditating. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I'll I'll get up and I'll go start to meditate, just like the mages in Origin, where I'm partially in the fade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so are both of you meditating? Yes. Roll a magic roll, please, both of you. What? <laughs> Now you've done it. Any, any focuses? Primal, if you have it. Cedric, um, you're meditating. You're giving your, I guess you're praying slash meditating? Yeah. yeah. You don't have to tell me what you're actually saying, but what are you, give me a rough idea of what you're praying about. Um, just inner, inner strength. Uh, um, it's the same prayer that I said last last time I meditated slash prayed. You're praying for inner strength. And part of inner strength, Cedric, is being able to release some burdens, internal burdens. Um, and you find yourself, while you're meditating, that you are getting into a state of peace, almost Zen, which is an unusual. Um, as a pious person, this is something that happens all the time. Something about this sensation, however, seems to be 
um, particularly strengthened in some sort of way, um, almost like your soul itself is turning lighter than air, till you realize when you open your eyes that you are currently now approximately six inches off of the ground, floating, hovering six inches off of the ground. Uh. <laughs> How do you react? He would freak out. You freak out, and as soon as you freak out, you immediately fall to the ground. <laughs> I wouldn't say that you fall on your face, but it's definitely not <laughs> smooth yeah, the yeah. way that you fell. Um, meanwhile, uh, Andrea, you're sort of trying to meditate as well, going into your happy place. <laughs> and while you are doing this, you begin to feel a mist forming around you, a gentle mist. Um, and then the light drizzle of rain, very lightly drizzle of rain. Um, I think that the rain itself is begins to reflect your inner emotions. So if you are still angry, it'll begin to downpour a bit. Um, as you keep control, um, and I think that, uh, if you hold on to you being upset, um, the, the rain continues to fall harder. If you look around, you'll notice that it's in an isolated position just around you. Like it's almost like you have your personal storm cloud <laughs> around you. <laughs> oh, um, meditating for the purpose of gaining control of that emotion and pushing it yeah. away so i would be trying to stop it but when this yes. starts happening around me can can i realize that it's my bracer because it's really weird <laughs> yeah you can okay um yeah i would i would try to fight against the uh, the emotions and push them well down. let me ask you a question you know that the easier way slash faster way would be to remove your bracer. But if you want to do it the longer way, then you can try to control it. It's up to you how you want to do, how you want to handle that. Just throwing it out there. I want to try and control it. Okay, roll me a magic roll with a primal. Okay. <laughs> Actually, this is more emotion based. Roll me a will, can it not a magic. Self-discipline self -discipline works. Okay. Oh, 13. 13? It lightens a little bit. I wouldn't say that you were able to fully control it ultimately, but it does lighten a bit so you're not soaking yourself wet. <laughs> <laughs> it's at this point that um, Razakale, who has been kind of MIA for the last half hour or so, comes returning, like humming a tune to herself that you don't recognize. And uh, when she gets back to the campfire, she drops down on the ground it appears to be several gathered pieces of fruit and root vegetables like parsnips uh, from her pack. And then the pack itself starts moving a little bit and crawling out from, uh, for out from it is a very cute looking opossum who goes over to one, pieces, one of the fruit pieces and starts munching on it and Razakale starts uh, petting and stroking the possum on its back. <laughs> Razakale, bring food! Why are you wet? She asks. <laughs> she asks Andrea. Also cold? <laughs> Come to fire, she says. Okay. <laughs> you get dry. Here, I she, fire. <laughs> she says. And uh, she takes a stick and she starts putting some of the root vegetables together. And then she starts holding it on the fire. I will roast you dinner. So she starts <laughs> roasting the vegetables on the fire. Thank you. Broody, you like vegetables or fruit? Oh, vegetables, please. She'll also make like a shish kebab of vegetables too. Let's shift over back to Halaser and um, Theoban and company. Sure. You guys are setting up your camp. Um, Violetta uh, puts, starts uh, putting up a tent, and it's a rather, it's a very nice looking tent, very spacious as any princess would, would have. 
And uh, while she's she's pitching her tent, she actually will start uh, chatting a little bit with Halasair. Mm -hmm. And uh, Violetta will say, Hall Halle, darling. Uh, and she says, so I never meant to ask you. Mm -hmm. Hadn't had a time. The last I saw you, you and uh, you ended up hurtling headfirst into the mirror, so I assumed. Uh, yes. What did happen to you during that time? We were worried. We were worried that uh, you had been lost to us. 